What's going on with these prices? Oh my god! Huh? Are you sick of all the ridiculous prices for the pre-built computers nowadays? Man, no way! Well, I know I am! I am as well! Wait, hold on, aren't you a computer? What's going on here? Yes, I am, so what? I'm here to help you build your own PC and get away with these expensive prices. Hi everyone! Hey! <laughs> Let's build this PC and have some fun. Let's get started. Right, so guys, for today's build, I'm gonna try something a bit different. Uh, that's because I'm a small YouTuber and I don't have somebody else manning the camera or being around with me when I do these builds. I am gonna try my friend Jennifer. Juniper, sorry. <laughs> so I'm gonna try my friend Juniper. Uh, she's the assistant from ChatGPT that everybody loves. Um, and she's gonna assist me today in building this PC with tips and tricks and uh, we'll see how funny she can be. Got it. I'll guide you through step by step as you go along. Let's start by getting the case ready and setting up the workspace. Removing any unnecessary panels or brackets now will make installing the motherboard a lot easier. Let's get started on that. Uh, here we have the Corsair 400D Airflow. This, uh, in my opinion, is a pretty nice budget case. Uh, that's, well, you know, has plenty of airflow going for it, and that's pretty nice. Absolutely. Having good airflow and cable management options makes the build much easier and cleaner. Next, let's remove the side panels so you have easy access to the interior. I still have to mention the motherboard that we have. We have an Asus Prime. This is, of course, the B650M. There are already some standoffs here that I could probably use from the case itself without actually going with the included standoffs. That because, well, the standoff on the case, they're actually painted matte black, so it matches the case, while the ones in the motherboard box are just aluminum or silver so they don't go well with the overall design. Sounds good. Using the pre-installed standoffs is a great idea, especially since they match the case. Just ensure they line up with your motherboard's mounting holes. Let's carefully place the motherboard in and see how it fits. Uh, would you happen to know which bit I need in order to remove the, um, well, the standoffs from the, from the motherboard? Usually, you need a 5mm nut driver or a standoff socket. It's sometimes included in PC toolkits. Ah, I got it. And I dropped it, but I got it back. Great. Glad you found it. Ready to proceed now? Yep. I'm just going to take the motherboard out of the box here, or I stay out of the static shield. I know some people are going to drill me in the comments because, well, I'm not grounded and I'm going to damage the motherboard somehow, but I don't think so. It's always good to be cautious, but as long as you handle it carefully and avoid static, you should be fine. Just proceed carefully. So this is a micro ATX board and we have a bunch of, well, letters around here from A to M to I to E. So if you have an ATX board, then everything is, you know, already preset. You just have to put a standoff in the correct hole and then you can put your motherboard in and you know you're good to go. So that's pretty cool. Whenever a system is standardized like this, it really helps a ton. Absolutely. Having clear labels and a standardized layout makes everything much smoother. It's definitely helpful when building. All right. Now we have the motherboard in. Perfect. Now you can start securing it with screws. Let's start with installing the CPU next. All right. We got this Ryzen 5 here, the 7600. There it is. And this Ryzen 5 7600 uh, CPU box. You also get the Stell cooler. So this is the original cooler that comes with the CPU that we are going to be using for this budget bill. I would say that this should be sufficient enough for the demonstration purposes and what for what we need. Also, it's black on black, no LEDs. It goes well with the overall aesthetics of the case. So this should keep things interesting. That's a solid choice. The stock cooler should work well for this build. Let's carefully place the CPU into the socket next. Remember to align the notches. Yes. Carefully lift the retention lever before placing the CPU. That will help it see properly. Uh, the thing is that I have a mounting system already here that surrounds the CPU, so I have to remove those. Uh, those are for bigger, bigger, more powerful coolers. 
So I'll have to remove those because, well, they're gonna be in the general way of installing the CPU cooler properly. So, uh, uh, I have to remove the back blade if I do this. It's gonna be a hassle. It can be a bit tricky, but taking those off is necessary for the stock cooler. Just keep track of the screws and the back plate so everything stays organized. But I have another idea for this build. I could ditch this included CPU cooler altogether because I happen to have the Prism cooler from the previous generation Ryzen that basically works as a mounting solution because what do you know? AM4 and AM5 same, uh, share basically the same mounting solution for the coolers and that makes installation pretty cool. So yes, I'm gonna upgrade this on the fly. I'm not gonna use the original included one in the box. That sounds like a great plan. The Prism cooler is definitely a solid upgrade and should offer better cooling performance. It's great that the AM4 and AM5 mounting solutions are compatible. Let's go for it. That's perfect. Now gently place the CPU into the socket, aligning it correctly. Yes, I'm gonna keep notice of the, well, golden triangle that's on the CPU to match it with the golden triangle that's, well, basically here on the motherboard. Exactly. Aligning those triangles ensures the CPU is oriented correctly. You're on the right track. I should. I should be. Because, well, this was on my first CPU install. Okay. Small wiggle. Doing great. It passes the wiggle test. So that means it is secure. The triangles are both aligned. So that's cool. You've got Perfect. Now you can gently lower the retention lever to lock the CPU in place. And what about the plastic cover? Should I remove that or it should pop out as soon as I press down on the retaining uh, lever? It should pop out once you press down the retaining lever. If it doesn't, you can remove it after securing the CPU. Looks nice, Great. rock solid, solid, and it is installed. Awesome job. Next, we can move on to applying thermal paste and mounting the cooler. So, I have some thermal paste here. Should I apply it now? Yeah, I'd like you to see, uh, to see you do actually. Yeah, that would be cool. I'll take your work for me if you want to. <laughs> okay, so I'm finally ready now. We can apply the thermal paste on this sucker because why not? Just gonna make an X on it. Should be just fine. I'm not gonna go too crazy here because, well, you can definitely overdo it without any sort of obvious advantages, or at least that's how I see it. And I'm gonna try and spread it out nice and evenly on uh, the surface of the CPU here. I'm sorry, but you've hit the daily limit for advanced voice. You can switch to standard now to keep chatting. Small situation update here. Basically, Juniper decided to call it quits. That's because I'm using ChatGPT Plus model and you only have a daily usage, or I should say daily limit, uh, usage for that advanced language model and that voice. So I'm stuck now with the standard voice uh, for the rest of the build. Um, she's not so, uh, let's say she's not as excited as, uh, you know, as Juniper was for building this computer today. But regardless, I'm gonna get it ready for you guys. And I'm gonna walk you through at the end of all things said and done, show you how what the and uh, well, I will show you what we have installed and how we went uh, about that. And well, for the next video, we're gonna do a performance test. We're gonna run some games on this puppy and see if this 4060 combined with the CPU can basically. That give sounds us... like a great plan. Even though Juniper had to step out, I'm still here with you, and I'm just as excited to see this build come together. You're doing an awesome job and I can't wait for the final walkthrough. Let's get that power supply installed and bring this system to life. You heard it here first, so let's do it. I know this video is a strange one, but well, since I'm all alone now, no more ChatGPT, maybe you can hit me up with a subscribe? I don't know. We'll try future projects that are fun together and with ChatGPT, you know, leave your thoughts and comments down in the box below. Tell me what would you like to see next? All right, let's carry on with the build. Let me know when you're ready to continue. Yeah, we can continue now with the standard voice because I am a poor YouTuber. I only have a daily limit available to me on the plot GPT uh, uh, subscription that I have. But you know what? I am going to install the CPU cooler uh, regardless of my daily limit being reached or not. 
And once it is in here, and it seems to be okay. Just make sure the latches are secure and the cooler sits evenly on the CPU. You're doing great. So let's go ahead and install the RAM. Of course, keeping in mind the notches, because, well, notches will be notches, and so they have to be respected. Getting that RAM installed is another big step toward an awesome gaming machine. Yes, yes, let's get that SSD in place. Make sure to align it with the M.2 slot and gently slide it in at an angle before securing it with the screw. This is gonna give you some blazing fast load times. Well, it, it should, it's not the best out of the bunch, but it should do pretty good. I mean, we're going for, you know, fast 1440p and it should be plenty fast. Let's just remove the peel. It should be plenty fast, uh, you know, since it is an NVMe SSD. Let's go. Time to get that power supply installed and take this build to the finish line. It's what we've been building up to. Let's get it all connected and make this happen. Now, let's move forward to the piece uh, that we've all been waiting for, installing the GPU. So, 4060. Let's take it out of the box. We have this 4060 from Asus. This cell uh, oh, should give us plenty of 1440p power gaming that we need. This is the GPU right here. Let's take it out. Now we're talking. The GPU installation is always the most exciting part. That 4060 from Asus will handle 1440p gaming like a champ. Just make sure to remove the PCIe slot covers if needed. Align it properly with the PCIe slot and press it in until you hear that satisfying click. Almost there. Yes, almost there, it's correct. Okay, I'm just gonna remove some of the peels from it. You've got this. Carefully align the GPU with the PCIe slot, press it in firmly until it clicks, and then secure it with the screws. Once that's done, we'll hook up the power cable and be ready for the big moment. That sounds, uh, that sounds like the plan. So here it is, the 4060. So guys, here we are at the end of this uh, build video where I tried to incorporate ChatGPT, but she gave us the ghost mid, uh, well, mid build because AI assistants nowadays can't be trusted. <laughs> But anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to get this PC ready for, well, the next video where I'm going to do some gaming on it and see exactly how this, well, mighty 4060 that it's definitely not going to burn down the house or the PC uh, with it. Uh, it's going to behave along with this mighty Ryzen 5 CPU that I have in there. And I'm pretty sure that we can do some convincing 1440p gaming that shouldn't be any sort of issues. Um, you know what? One final thought here. You'd be so cool and awesome if you'd take your sweet time to maybe subscribe to the channel and show some love. And I'll definitely catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. And until the next one, you know what to do. Stay informed. Maybe check out some of my previous videos right here. Uh, drop a comment down in the box below and see you around.